All right. So, Abducted in Plain Sight follows the story of, uh, I'm going to get their names right, the Brobergs. Okay? The Brobergs. I spoke it. The B-R-O-U-G. B-R-O. Bergs. B-E-R-G-S. Okay. Brobergs. Sorry, I'm just curious. Okay. And there's two families, Brobergs and Berktold. Okay. Or Birchtold. I'm not sure exactly okay. the, the correct pronunciation. But we're going to call him B. Okay. okay, because that's what the family called him. Why? Who? Who's him? Okay, family friend. They live in, I want to say Iowa, Pocadilla, Pocatella or Pocadilla, yeah, Iowa, middle of, middle of Iowa. Whatever. Okay, so, I legit one hundred and ten percent made no, that up. No, it was Idaho. Dang it! It was Idaho. <laughs> it was Idaho. <laughs> That made it all worthwhile, though. Okay. Now, yes. It was Iowa. Idaho. It's, no, I, I'm looking at it right now. Idaho. Okay, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. They, they didn't really focus on this, but I think in some sense it's pertinent, or I think it is. They were part of um, the Mormon faith okay. out there. Okay. Is that a big still a- area? Like, well, for- Utah is maybe bleeding into Idaho. I don't know. The, okay, the LDS, on probably the area. Okay, Church of Latter Day Saints. They're part of it. And the reason I say that it kind of shades this is is you'll see like this concept of a, a, a man and, and multiple women. I guess maybe. Okay, that maybe that has something okay. to do with it. I don't know if that's why this family was so like comfortable with this guy and his in his in his ways or not it may or may not have so anything to do there, with there the might story. be a, a cultural thing happening that we we it, are it, maybe it's not it it's might, new to us but maybe it not to might, whatever they was don't explore there. this in the documentary at okay. all if i had a chance to talk to the family i would probably ask them this did you know is that why you were so close to this I guy see. in the okay. first place right and so, what's his name um robert rob okay. robert birch told burke told but okay they called him B. That was like an affectionate term. Like okay, that's even better than I can remember that. And the Bobergs or Brobergs called him. The kids called him Dad as well. That's that's strange, but okay, it is strange. So Dad or B, but most of the time, even in the documentary, it would make more sense if they called him like Uncle B or something, right? Yeah, but yeah. B. Everybody kind of like affectionately called him B. Okay. 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 So. The the kid out of the I think it was three daughters that um, were in the Broberg family, he focuses on the oldest, whose name was Jan. And how old is she? Um, when he first starts hanging around them, un- under the so far, this is just a f- a person, not not a, an actual family member, just nope. a not not necessarily even necessarily neighbor, but a family family friend. friend. Yes. <clears throat> okay. And okay. I don't know the age that she was when he first started hanging, but under twelve, Jan, under Jan. twelve at the time. Under there, twelve, but there was the also time. two other A younger other sisters. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the Brobergs and Birchtolds. I'm going to read some of this word for word on this timeline thing to kind of set the stage. Sure. They were close friends, spent countless hours and days together. The Broberg children, all girls, eventually came to call Birchtold dad and also B. Unbeknownst to them, he was simply getting close to them in order to take Jan as his own. He believed that they were destined to be together and essentially wouldn't take no for an answer. So, Do we have an age for B? Uh, Roughly at the time. <clears throat> 30s, 40s. You know, grown okay. man. Okay. Uh, I don't, I, it doesn't say his age. In Still here. incredibly young. Yes. Incredibly Thank you young. Nice. Thank you. <clears throat> so during the first few years together, it says this, Birch told gained the trust of every member of the Broberg family. He made advances at Marianne, the wife, and Bob Broberg, the dad. Made advances at both of them. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> okay. the first the first WTF moment of the show comes when the dad, the Broberg dad, the father of Jan, the girl he's sort of like fixated on, okay? Bob. Bob is talking about this experience and getting close, you know, B, his friend, family friend, over all the time, him and his wife, blah, blah, blah. So B had a wife and B uh, had a wife. They probably yeah. about the same age, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little, maybe Bob was probably a little younger if he had a 12 year old, but yeah. 
So <clears> they're <throat> they're, they're hanging out yeah. together, and he says he's in a car one day and, and looks over and uh, B is just has a raging boner, and he's like, oh geez, you know, like what's what's the deal? And he's like, well, you know, uh, if I if I don't take care of this, I, like I I can, you know, I'm, I'm kind of attracted to to kids, and so the way that you know to solve that is if you would help me you know take care of this then i wouldn't then i wouldn't have the problem anymore so the dad in the in the documentary and i'm kind of like taking this documentary in at first you know kind of like okay okay you're trying so you don't you're not realize that you're about to get hit right square no and he's and the dad is sitting in this chair now the dad in this moment is like i mean this was recorded and put out in 2017 so he's old yeah you know recounting the story yeah and he's like so you know I, i i did it i reached over and i and i took care of it for him and I just sat up and I looked at Sherry and I was like, literally, what in the actual fuck? Are you kidding me? Just happened. But it, I'm right like, there, did he say what spell, I think he just said? That just spells kind of like what how everything else is going to spill out of this, right? I mean, so now I'm in. Now I'm like, what? I think it's funny because you're all now you're all in, and I'd be like, I'm done with this. this is <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, I'm like not not because just if because Brooke like and I were watching that, I'd but be like, like just because I'm done, I'm done n- with this. Not, not because there's a homosexual moment, but because it's so ignorant. The guy is so this guy Bob is so fucking ignorant that it, I'd be like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this. Well, I don't a lot even of people I, were because then I would be so scared. I wouldn't want to hear about these kids. I was looking at it, a lot of people were like, I couldn't even watch it. I stopped. Really? It okay. Was that so bad. anyway, so. Sorry, I, we've got yes. Now, now so I have is, to. We got to do this. I get it. This I'm is scared. This is going on, and it's this isn't a one time thing. So now him getting B off. Hey Bob, saw another kid again. To control his desires, let's <laughs> get in the car and go for a drive. Okay, to control his desires, this is happening, and let's just just. He calls it the B line. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So and and there's flirting going on with the wife, Broberg's wife as well, which is sort of like accepted. What's going on with B's wife? She's just sort of there. Okay. She never really plays much of a role, even in the even in, in the documentary. I don't think I ever seen her. Okay. And and again, if I missed her, then I missed her. Okay. And if I get guys, if you're listening to this and I get any details wrong, I apologize. Hey, he's not I trying did to just see it once. He's I'm not, not trying, trying to over to distort this, this. sensationalize this because is... I might have the the exact details of what he said he was attracted to as to why Broberg started jerking this guy off or whatever else. I don't know. Oh, and spoiler alerts. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Eventually, B. You may want to put the explicit E Go, on goes, this one. Goes off on yeah. to get therapy. Yeah. And he, he comes back and he says to the Brobergs that he went to therapy. And well, I wonder, I just wonder how that came to be. Like, I, don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, was, I went was, to therapy. Yeah, was was Bob like, hey, dude, I, I, my hand's getting tired. Like, I I feel like I'm doing how this. How long are we going to do this like, before way, you get some help? Way longer than I should. You know, like, <laughs> now it's taking longer. Like, what, what are you going to do? Like, I can't keep doing this. Exactly. So he comes back from therapy and says that his therapist said that he he he, he, hands. he, conf- <laughs> he confesses to Bob <clears throat> that when he was four, that when B was four, he slept with one of his aunts and it messed him up, right? So he says that his therapist now says the best way for him to deal with this attraction that he has is for him to sleep with uh, Jan at night to lay next to her. So Bob, this is the second moment where I almost wanted to find Bob and oh throw him through gosh. a plate gla- glass window is, was this, he lets him do it. Usually four to six nights a week. Oh B God. stays over at the Broberg's and s- sleeps in bed with Jan. 12 year old Jan. Under 12. Under 12. Yes. Okay. 
four to six nights a week. Okay. Now, at this point in the documentary, are we getting? Are they ever switching to Jan? And what like Jan, like, Jan during during takes this on? Yes. I, I'm not saying like reveal anything. I'm just saying like at this point in the documentary, is she talking about like yeah? And he used to do that. And and there she was- is in the documentary, and she kind of <laughs> talks about how she would be groggy because he was giving her her vitamins. They were sleeping pills. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so she's basically he's basically knocking Jan out, and well, it turns out he's Mike. molesting her at night in the same house where. Her parents are because they let this man that the dad is already sexually pleasing oh sleep in God. bed with his daughter. So what really, really Holy ticks me shit. off is anybody, including Jan at the end of the documentary, dude, still justifying her parents, still saying they were just deceived by this master manipulator. No, he was a master baiter, and your dad helped him. <laughs> wait, wait, how long were you waiting to just throw that out there? I just, just, just came to me right now. <laughs> well done. Pun intended. Uh, well done. So this is the beginning. This is just setting it up, and you're wow. just like, okay, what? And you just, what? 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 Now you know why I'm texting you. What? Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. You're like, What? What? Yeah, I, right? heard, I heard about all this. Period. Already. Now. Wow. Period. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Exclamation point, period. Question six. mark. Six. No less than six. Okay. So throughout the documentary, these parents are acting surprised at everything that's going to unfold, but this is the groundwork that's already been laid. You're literally having man sex with the guy. You're believing that he's man he sex. needs to lay in bed with your daughter who's like nine or 10 or whatever she was like the time, and sleep lot. in the same bed as your kid. And you think, and literally the dad in the documentary is like, man, I should have seen all the red flags. Okay. Okay. No, there, you are the red flag. You tar. Oh you gosh. are the red flag. This is your, your, you're literally sitting in cars, jacking this guy off and then say, it's okay to lay in bed with your daughter while you're not in there. Are you out of your... You didn't miss the red flags. You, sir, are the red flag. I Let's be honest here as we kind of go back a little bit. So, Bob, let's let's think about Bob here, right? Obviously, um, there's something very wrong with Bob. This, yeah, he lacks Bob, a bullet in Bob, the middle of his skull. <clears throat> Bob is, is <laughs> worse in many regards than the guy who was... Uh, than B. Yeah. And obviously that's not, I mean, <clears throat> but there's there's obviously an element of, I don't believe that Bob gave B a hand job simply because he thought he was <laughs> helping no. the children. No, he's a so raging guy, bisexual. Yeah, so the guy or obviously. Or a homo that's covering, yeah, you know? Yeah, so the guy obviously ha- has other things happening in his life. Yeah, boners was, around a dude. That's yeah. what's happening. It's just slapping boners everywhere. But yeah, they're playing tummy around. sticks. Slapping Johnsons. What would, what would you call it? Tummy sticks. Tummy sticks. <laughs> so what about the wife? You want to place the words? What was happening with uh, Bob's wife? Uh, did they interview her during this? Yes. Uh, okay. She she also had been flirtatious. It gets, it gets more demented just along oh, the way. But yes, yeah, she God. had also been, you know, enamored with this guy on some level. Is he like, I don't know. Like, did he write a book that I can like, like get, learn some the mom, stuff from? The mom wrote a book. Like, is that him right there? Yes, that's him, and that's Jan. Oh my uh, gosh, that picture makes me so uncomfortable. Yeah, it should. You, it, it should make anybody uncomfortable. It does. Where's his life vest? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> We're going to hell. Hell party of okay. three. Okay. So, hey, I didn't. What? Yeah, you didn't. Have, you brought the picture up. Yeah, you brought. You're the in picture. with this. You're this in. Is, you're fully in. You're complicit, just like <laughs> no. Bob. You're all in, just buddy. like Bob Broberg was complicit. Yeah. You are complicit. Do not compare you me to are, Bob Broberg. You're hey, gonna have hey, a very hey, bad hey, night. Back off. Oh, oh, you're a tough guy. Yeah, yeah back I'll... off, B. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> Put your life vest on here. Calm down, B. He's like, all I'm right. not B. I want to. I'm not B. <laughs> so, okay, so let's all right. keep getting into this. This is just. I, so this you is the dynamic. You can't make it up. This is just you so far. Just, it's just my. It's kind of mind boggling. I can't imagine watching the actual documentary. They probably did a very good job and well put together. And it's probably made it even more like demented as you had to 
try to. I'll tell you, they did what they did was they took um, <clears throat> a, f- a film and they dressed people up like it was the '70s because that's that's the time. Oh, frame okay, this. This so is they like kind of mid '70s. Through... So literally, they probably had intermixed with actors little... recreating it like it was old. Uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was whatever that 35 mm projector type stuff, film. Yeah. You know, and film, that was yeah. the recreation. Was that? I said just film. Just film. Yeah, okay. whatever. You call it whatever you want. Anyway. This guy. This guy. This guy. Like he knows, like a lot he knows of movies video are work. Speed. A, <laughs> lot of, a lot of movies are still shot on film. Well, it, it was... Bohemian Rhapsody. It just looked like a, a home video from the 70s. Right. Where okay. they, it, was, it wasn't like home video on VHS. It was like... The I, frames. I, get, I don't yes. know. I know what you're right. talking about. Either so, way. So okay. So let's let's get into. The, I want to. So yeah. this is the dynamic, the Brobergs and Berktolds. They can you tell me a little bit more about? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Bob's wife. Now Marianne, they, I think her name. Have is. they been getting into like kind of that where she was enamored by him? Uh, so start, now, if if I'm if I'm jumping, then that's fine. You can back me up. But uh, is, did she start doing stuff with with B also? Then at this I don't point? think it. Not yet. <clears throat> okay. So. Other than just, I think flirtatious type. Okay. She loves B. You know, he's part of the family. Okay. Kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. And all of the sisters are like, yeah, we had a good upbringing. We were happy. Everybody loved B. No one seemed to think it was abnormal that a, a friend grown man was sleeping in a bed with Jan. Right, and that he was being that's jerked off by their father. Correct. That's oh. the first. Problem. None of that's weird. Okay, that yeah. is going to explain a lot about what what happens. What happens with next. the rest okay. of this? I'm ready. Let's do it. Lay it on me, buddy. Okay. So it comes it comes to a point. Uh, Jan's twelve, and you're gonna we're gonna find out why he waits until she's twelve for this. But he asks to go horseback riding with her. Can I take her out horseback riding? And they were like, "Well, it's a school night, you know." And but yeah, I guess go ahead, take her horseback ride. You know how late night horse riding is. Yeah, of course, <laughs> we all do. <laughs> so, so turns out that B has a motorhome, and he drives her out, and ultimately stages their kidnapping. Both of them. He makes it look like both of them were taken. Okay. But ultimately, he has kidnapped her. Right. Okay. okay. That's what's happened. He has taken her away. And they went to Mexico. I don't know if it's still the same in Mexico or not, but the legal age of marriage there at the time was 12. Mexico, okay. And Mexico. Okay. So Buongiorno. he was going to Echo in Mexico, a little marriage between him and Jan. Ay, caramba. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, caramba, indeed. <laughs> Arriba. Ah. Andale. Mmm, <laughs> Coca-Cola. Okay. So... It wasn't, it wasn't a kidnapping in the sense of he just takes her and then right, like, right, right. oh, you know, where yeah. did she go? Like, yeah. um, they they he tried to make it look like they were both taken. Yeah, okay. But then these phone calls start happening where um, it says Jan didn't grasp much of this right away. She was dealing with a bigger issue. Get this, this is one of the craziest things ever. How demented this guy was. While she was with B, she was brainwashed via a tape recorder and given a mission. He would drug her, and he played this tape. He made a vi- an audio recording, and he would play this recorder next to her in bed and make it sound like he was an alien, that she was being given a mission, and if she didn't get impregnated with B's child her whole family would be killed. Okay. My question is, did they play some of the... Re- yes. Okay, good. Dude, this is Freak- some, like, horror Freaking movie. Can, can you play Weird. any of it? Because I don't want to listen to it. No, I really want to hear what the alien voice. I'm really concerned. Okay, yeah, we I'm can, really we can pull it up on Netflix. Lo- log in. Okay, so just to be clear, I went back. We were just I just showed you the part yes. where he's confessing to the jerk-off. And it wasn't that he said, I misunderstood. Yeah. He said, this is just kid stuff. I need relief. Because, because he was because saying he not, hated his wife. Yeah, because he's not sexually satisfied with so his Gail, wife. So Gail, his wife, it wasn't, wasn't doing it for him. Yeah. He needed Bob Broberg to handle it for him. Okay. And Bob handled it real good. So when he said it's just kid stuff, I, I in my head, I was thinking he was talking about being attracted to kids. Well, stuff. you were you were traumatized. <laughs> you were I was traumatized. Point. All right. So here's the alien voice that I, this this thing. My wrists and my ankles both had straps around them. I couldn't move. This monotone voice kept talking in my ear. 
like a little white intercom looking box that I could I could see to the side of my pillow. Wow. Yeah. That's freaky. She so she's thinking that the real enemy is a UFO. Yeah, that she's about to be abducted or has been abducted basically. Like something's going on. There's an what? alien being that's... What went through this dude's mind to come up with this? Yeah. Yeah. So Jan was told that she was supposed to have an alien race by having a child with Birch told. She needed to do this by age 16 or one of her sisters would have to do it or her family members would go blind or die, fearing for her life, her sister's life, and the livelihood of this fake alien race. Jan and Birch told have sex. At... Well, she's 12. 12. Okay. Eventually, Birchtold wanted to return back to the States, but needed the Broberg family to agree to the marriage. So she's gone like 90 some days, something like that. The FBI's involved trying to find them this whole nine yards. Oh, my God. But How they the hell get does a, he live for 90 days? Like, I'm just in this trailer. He's... It's like an RV mm-hmm. that he took to Mexico. So oh the Broberg gosh. family did not agree and instead flew to Mexico and the Federales get involved to go in and get her. So how, how do they find out? That, uh, he called oh, he because he wanted calls. to come home. So if they needed they needed the permission after for them to be married, his marriage to get back across the border. Okay. Yeah, he's basically had her for months, uh, indoctrinating her with this alien yeah. tape, drugging her, and having sex with her repeatedly. Oh my god! Okay, all right. So, now, do we know if he was actually drugging her and having sex? Yeah, or she was says he just, she she describes. Him having sex with her? No, no, no. I mean, was yeah, was was he always drugging her, or did I don't know. It, they were always point, doing it because that, yeah. I'm not saying that's. I'm just saying like at some point it's it's even more traumatic in in that way, like she, where he felt probably felt at some point comfortable enough that he didn't even have to. She describes drug her a like whole. A, you know the 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 air vent at the top of the RV that pops open, yeah, like the yeah. little bubble. She says she describes just focusing. There was like this set of leaves on a tree hanging. She says. She would just focus on that when he was molesting her and just think, like, that's all I got to do is just focus on the leaves. Focus did, on the leaves. Did she want to cry. Yeah, but I know, did she terrible. not? Did, at, at, I mean, at 12, did she did she know enough to know that this was not the right thing? Or did at this point, like, she didn't. Now, because I could imagine if, if she were, quote, unquote, in love with him at 12 and, and wanted to have sex with him or whatever. She does fine. fall in love with him. Oh, okay. So this is this gets even crazier then. Yes. But But, but at this point, we know that. She's right now doing it, not doing it because she loves him, but because she feels like she needs to do this because of this alien uh, persona that's happening. Yes. Okay. What? So, oh that's God, that's she so kind of like that's what with. he converts her with, basically. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Jan, confused and clearly not thinking. So he, and here's what happens. And uh, twelve court wise. Okay. So he gets federally charged with kidnapping. Like, as you would think, the FBI would do. Yeah. But, but, <sighs> the wife of Birch told gets a hold of the Broberg family and is like, hey, listen, um, we, we need to do something about this or everything's going to come out, you know, like, about, you know, man sex and, yeah. you know, he can't do this, he's sick, blah, blah, blah. So... It says this. Birch, uh, Birch told was up on kidnapping charges. His wife Wait, you know, used the know affair. That they're doing that. They're, yeah, that's how she knows. Gay sex. She knows. So she knows now. Just the use wife the know. affair just... information to blackmail the Brobergs into lessening the charges. So basically, they, this, I wonder if this is how Bob's wife finds out. They submit <clears throat> written statements like, "No, we we were we made a mistake. We told him he could take her." We didn't realize he was going to go that long, but we think there was a miscommunication, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they were saving their own butts, basically. But that it was and later. And doing what was best for the cha- welfare so of the child. So his charges, the, all they could get with no witnesses was 45-day sentence. He served 10 days. Wow. Okay. 10 days. That's the first kidnapping. That guy needs to die. Wow. So is he dead now? No, this is, don't do this for me. We'll find out, I'm sure. Then, so Jan is back home. Now <laughs> she's writing letters and permitted to exchange letters with, with B. The parents okay. are still letting this go on. 
She's expressing she's in love with him. She wants to now, marry him. Yeah, because now they're scared of the repercussions. They're screwed. It would come out. It would it would embarrass them for their church. And it's for just going to get worse and worse community. and worse. He's a florist. Has this has this successful florist business in town. You know that kind of a thing. And he would have been exposed. So they allow this to keep happening florist with their daughter. Is gay coincidence? I think mm. not. I'd so like to a florist business. Literally, he wants. I'm gay. Happy. B doesn't come back to town. <laughs> He's there for church on the weekends, but he's in uh, Wyoming and and buys and runs some like uh, entertainment place, like you know where you would go rent uh, rafts and ride around or whatever. I don't know some some amusement type okay place. And Jan wants to go there for the summer, and she starts pitching a fit that she can't go. You know she loves B, and B calls. And talks to Marianne Broberg and is like, hey, you should just let her go because she's just going to go out and hitchhike and get here. And it's going to be safer if you just send her here. Yeah. So totally Marianne right. Broberg puts Jan on a plane uh, to Wyoming yeah. and sends him there. Oh, you know, for a little bit in the summertime okay. to be with B. Now, what's going on with Marianne? Has she uh, been with uh, B yet? Not quite yet. So this gets worse and worse. But because I could even understand if the timing was different for everything here, like you'd be like, God, this is a twisted story, but but, yeah. it, but it would fall into place. This isn't even falling into place. It's so twisted. No. Like, so this goes on this whole like, I really love him. I want to marry him kind of a thing. Ruined my entire night goes on. Sorry. <laughs> so Jan is kidnapped again. Okay, here's another thing. Of course. Later in the summer of 76, Jan runs away from home, leaving both her family and Birch Told distraught. Supposedly, Birch Told now, as it turns out... B. B. Okay. She climbs out a window. He takes her. Okay? Birch Told tells everybody he has no idea where Jan is. What he really did was drove her to Pasadena and put her in a Catholic girls' school and said he was a member of the CIA and that they were on the run and they had to take her in because he was a CIA agent and entered her name as Janice something, some other name. What? Exactly. How? I like to think that she... Welcome to the 70s. Joplin. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so... (laughs) <laughs> the best is it's <laughs> what a wild west kind of like so the covenants not even like the the least bit concerned over this are like well the guy seems pretty legit so he did say he was with the CIA he said it so that sounds pretty serious oh my god okay so so yeah right. however the FBI was convinced that Birch told knew where she was well good idea because they did he did so. Later, in November, in November of that year, it came to light that Birch told had kidnapped Jan back in August, right? Now living in Salt Lake City, had enrolled her in all-girl Catholic school in California. I told you that guy's that. So, and he told the school, if anybody comes looking or asking, they're the bad guys. Don't give any information. Okay. <laughs> they're the bad guys. <laughs> they're the bad guys. They're the Russians. The FBI contacted the school, but they were reluctant to disclose Jan's information, assuming it's, that what they had Cuba. told them was true. The FBI was able to get Jan out of the school was and brought her back in home. in the 70s just, like, stupid? Well, over there they were. In that process. Well, like, I don't get... <laughs> dude, get this. In that process, while she's gone, Marianne and B are talking all the time about if either of them had heard from Jan. And B is super concerned and invites Marianne over to his trailer. Oh, there's and a lot, then there's a lot that happens in this. He trailer. tells Marianne about how much he loves her, and then she describes well, his hands started touching my thigh, and then my breasts, and then we had intercourse in his trailer. And so that goes on while Jan is at this all girls school, randomly getting visits from B to have sex with with uh, Jan. My God. He's also sleeping with Jan's mom, Marianne, which and getting handies <laughs> from, which weirdly makes sense because Marianne. Is obviously not getting it from Bob because Bob's gay. Because Bob is as gay yeah. as like his flagpole only goes to full mast when a dude is around. Yeah. Yes. Obviously. Clearly. So so we have Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's keep going. I, so I'm while Jan is this. kidnapped, literally keep in mind, in the mind of Marianne and Bob Broberg, their daughter 
is kidnapped and in danger. And B is saying, well, I've talked to her sometimes. I think she's, I think she's basically whoring herself out. She's not with me, but she's living a dangerous life. Oh my God. And so he's commiserating with them all the while he's put her in the school and is keeping her away from them. Yeah. How often is he visiting her? I, I don't know. Okay. She's, she's, Jan says that all in all, they probably had at least 200 sexual encounters. Is that all? Okay. That's it. That's not a, technically that's not even one per day for an a, entire yeah, year. Yeah, not, not a so big deal. So that's hardly right? anything. So oh he, okay, FBI gets Jan out of the school, brings her back. Jan doesn't want anything to do with the family. They describe she walks in, walks right to her room. She hates them because she wants to be with B. That's what she wants. Right. Okay. She's completely brainwashed at this yeah. point. Imagine complete, completely ruining a kid's. Like, so then she gets home, and all of a sudden the. The somebody's uh, at the door. They're getting a call. Or whatever the floor, the flower shop has been burned and is burning to the ground. They watch their their family business burn to the ground because in the ten days or whatever he goes back to jail. He's charged with kidnapping. So maybe it wasn't the first time. It was the second time. He's in jail. He convinces two guys when they get out to burn the place down, and he was going to pay him a thousand bucks to do it. All right. So they burn the florist shop down. And so what, what the hell was this for? Because they took Jan away from him. Okay. So he's brought to trial again for first degree kidnapping, but not convicted. Instead, because he was he was judged not mentally, you know, stable or capable yeah. or whatever. And how does is, that happen? He is sentenced to a medical facility, mental facility in 1977. Released six months later. Okay. <laughs> Marianne may have been happy about that. So, Jan is coming up on her 16th birthday. And remember that the aliens told her that if oh my this wasn't God, done by the right. 16th birthday, if she didn't have a baby by the time she was 16, her family is going to go blind or die and her mission would be fa- a failure. My question is, who is she telling this to? Has she told anybody Nobody this? yet. She hasn't told anybody about the mission yet. Oh, my gosh. they Because probably, he probably brainwashed her. Don't, if you say anything. This so, she is, dis- she she is thinking about this. So she wanted to go to a summer camp. So the parents reluctantly send her to this drama summer camp for three weeks. And while she's there, she concocts this plan, as she describes it, to be like, get a gun and kill her sister. Okay, she concocted a plan to carry out the rest of the mission herself in which she'll kill herself and Karen. Eventually, she, she describes this moment where she has like three seconds where she starts to think, what if this isn't true? Okay. And she tells it to somebody who says, you've got to tell your parents. So she tells them about this uh, concocted story. And her 16th birthday comes and goes. And everything's fine. And she realizes she's open to the idea that she was lied to because it never happened. Because something so very real to her. Yes. Yes. So Did that's not. insane. She had Marianne had filed for divorce from Bob. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Because Bob, Bob sent. I'm sorry, I, I I definitely said that wrong. Bob files for divorce because Marianne had cheated with B, and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and he was the 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 now bishop. Ta- the talk bishop about a of, guy with a problem. It's a little bit that, of a double that standard. Guy I think. Still, still to this day, won't admit. His own truth that he's gay, right? No, he won't admit that. Obviously, because he he thought like it, it was easier for him to divorce his wife for uh, for cheating on him than for him to to just be a gay guy. Well, especially back then, I suppose, uh, and and accept that you know that he's gay, right? Whatever. Wow. So okay, he had divorced her because the bishop of the LDS at the time that he was res- answering to a church said, "You got to do something with her," and so he. Divorces her. How long was Mary and B? Uh, Nine months. They, they were, were having. A, okay. Okay. Yes, they were. She would visit him every so often and back and forth, like for nine months, I think. So, after the sixteenth birthday, or it, it also kind of like along those times, like Marianne had come back and thrown B out of her life, and they described like she comes into the kitchen and says, "I'm putting him out of my life. I need to be back here for our kids. They need both of us." And Bob says she fell into my arms. That was enough for me. And off we were as a, as a big happy family again. Now B is in a mental facility. And ultimately, Marianne writes a book. She says she starts writing it in the 90s. It's called Stolen Innocence, the Jan Broberg story. 
and then Marianne and Jan go on a speaking tour in like 2003 and they start, you know, making people aware of child predators or whatever. Oh my God. And eventually B shows up to one of the speaking gigs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to breathe here. Her security was bikers against child abuse. Oh, oh. He pulls up and they're like, that's B. So they're like, get him. These oh. bikers are going to get him. And one of the bikers jumps on B's van and holds on. He hits the brakes, falls off, runs the guy over. He's injured. They oh, finally man. catch up to B. It turns out he's got a gun in the car. He goes to jail again. And he ultimately kills himself with his heart medication and drinking a bunch of stuff. And he commits suicide. Good. But not not before um, Jan had gotten a, a, a lifelong restraining order against him. Now, uh, guys that are listening to this, my timeline is going to yeah, be... Yeah, I, I watched this once. so my t- And, I, and I, I actually haven't read my notes that much here. I, I've been yeah. kind of just recounting yeah, the yeah. story. So now Jan is at the end of the documentary basically saying like, yeah, I mean, we were all victims. My parent, like her parent, the, the, all the kids just sing the parents' praises. And what I'm left of this documentary going, no, Jan, you're still duped. You were duped by B and you are still to this day being abused by your parents. Yeah. These parents need to be, I put on uh, social media yesterday, these parents need to be publicly hanged. They are vile disgusting human beings. They were not manipulated. They were complicit in the manipulation. They need to be strung up. And I would put a bullet in Bob Broberg's head right now and not feel an ounce of guilt about doing it. Boy, I I, I tell you what, it's it's, a powerful statement. It uh, It is a powerful statement. I don't care. I mean it. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Dude. (laughs) And I asked Jerry, I said, like, listen, I, I, I turned to her at the end of this. I go, listen, Anybody ever did something to my daughter, my daughters, any whatever? I said, that ever happened? Are you okay? I just want to know right now, are you okay with just visiting me in prison? She said, yep. And I'm like, because that's, I'm telling you, I wouldn't call the cops. I would grab them. I would restrain them. I would torture them. Then I would kill them. And then I would just turn myself in and go do my time. Because I'll tell you right now, (laughs) that's just exactly what would happen. You can come say hello in prison. I'm okay with it. I've known my kids long enough. I love them. And God bless America. I just do my time in jail. God bless America. <laughs> this is a bold statement. <laughs> um, Somebody's like, "What if a defense attorney saw this tweet?" I'm like, "I don't care. You don't care. That don't is care. True. You do not care. Put me, put me in front of a jury of, well, uh, of fathers. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, I just, <laughs> I think the problem too is that these people not guilty. <laughs> better hope the fathers aren't all bobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bunch of, yeah. Bobs doesn't want to see any vagines. He's only wants I, bobs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, he wants no Johnson. Bob's <laughs> yeah. He wants the junk. Jeez, OP. Oh, You're right over there, bro. Wow. I'm sick. That so, sounded. Uh, the way wet. I look at it is this. Yeah, it I did sound water. wet and, and wispy. Bacterial. Um, it's weird because uh, the daughter, Jan, who, how old is she now then? Probably in her. Oh, she was. You mean she 40s, was 12 and like 74 or something yeah. like that. So, I mean, okay. whatever that is. So, she's in her now. 50s probably. But. Um, so it's just weird to me because she's she's you're right she's there's a lot that happened uh, which is probably even more maybe even more dr- drastic uh, behind the scenes That's what she looks things like. that we haven't Can you guys see no it? I can't see it no the- um, but things that we ha- aren't even privy to right whatever was going on either with a case or or whatever but to think that but to think that your mother and your father who put you through that. Uh, if you put yourself in that position, um, would you consider yourself a victim of that as well? Meaning, if if Jan here was Bob or Jan here was Marianne and did the same thing to her children, would she say, no, "Yeah, no, I still think that's it's okay." You know, you know, because I can't see that. I can't see any human being thinking that that. No, like, I, I, like, I, no, they were, were all victims. That, I think that Jan was at a young age manipulated by every adult in her life that was like her parents and B. Right. I think she's just jacked up. I feel all the empathy in the world for Jan. So wait, which one's Jan? This chick? Uh, mm. It looks like the one on the left there. Yeah, yeah that's, I think Jan. that's her. I bet you anything that's Jan. 
it looks like her from from there. So like the smile. Uh, I just, I guess, but I just look at it like these. So obviously, I just anybody that's on social media that's out there saying like, I can't believe her family, her parents were that naive. Guys, they weren't it naive. Wasn't naive. They were complicit in this. They were they were saving their own asses, and it's disgusting. Well, this is what, ha- and I think this is what happened. If we're if you're trying to like break it break it down, right? So uh, Bob, who's obviously homosexual. Uh, wants to have sexual relationships with a uh, sexual relationship with B. Obviously, him and and uh, Marianne. If if he's gay, obviously it's not going to work between them as far as sexually. She's frustrated. They find out that after she gets kidnapped or whatever, I'm just going to bring this to light. Right now, all of a sudden, you know, B's wife. I'm going to bring this to light. Everybody's going to know. Well, now that's where the problem is. Is now they're complicit. They're they're saying we have to protect our ass. So anything that happens from this point on is just going to be have to be something yeah, we bury even, deep even down. Be, even before that, to let your kid to to buy into this therapy thing where this grown man needs to sleep with your child. I again no, that's no, not I, naivety. Again, not even I, again, close. I'm I'm not debating that. So I, I, I like I said, it's not that I have a. I'm just saying I think it got worse. It it, it went past the point of no return. I think a long time ago, but <laughs> but meaning like once they thought that they were going to get in trouble, right? They didn't give a crap about anybody else. No, they and no, matter of fact, not. so much that they were willing to sacrifice their 12 year old daughter. Yep. Her innocence. Yep. To save themselves. And, and just to save themselves. And that's it. Yep. And that, that Marianne was so deprived of of any kind of relationship because Bob couldn't even be true to his own gayness. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> right. That he married a woman, made her miserable, so miserable that she's messed up in the head and has sex with a, a, a freaking predator. A predator. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm not talking about like the Arnold Schwarzenegger kind. No, that would have been less Gosh. detrimental. <sighs> Thanks for screwing me up. I don't even know what to do with my life now. Does it make you want to rage against the machine? <laughs> I'm all That's crazy out. talk, guys. Against the machine. Am I taking crazy pills here? <laughs> crazy That's what I was like watching the show. Am I taking crazy pills? It's wow. You you cannot make that up. That is. Wow. Yep. Stranger than fiction, right? Oh. Unbelievable. Wow. Woo.